We've already talked about how to interpret the coefficients for logistic regression. Um, in this video, we're going to go back to the same scenarios that we used earlier um, and talk about how to get those results in jump. So this first example is looking at using income to predict whether or not somebody has a travel credit card. So I'm going to start off just with analyze fit y by x. So remember, fit y by x is appropriate anytime you're looking at the relationship between just two variables, which is what we're doing here. And fit y by x has different options um, depending on what type of data we have. So in this case, we have a quantitative explanatory variable, that's income, and then we have a categorical response variable, whether or not someone has a travel card. So the default in fit y by x is to use logistic regression for that, and that's what we want to do. So I'm going to put travel card as my y and income as the x, and I'll click OK. So let's look at the estimates down here. These numbers look very similar um, to what we had in the notes, but notice that the signs are reversed. And the reason for that is because the way the odds were reversed actually had a different value on top. So notice that this says for log odds of no over yes. So meaning not having a travel card is considered a success and yes is considered a failure. But we actually defined it the other way and I think it makes more sense to think of yes as a success. So let's go in and reverse the order of yes and no in jump. So I'm just going to come over here to the travel card column and double click that. And then in column properties, I have the option to change the value order. So I'm going to go in and reverse these so that yes is the first one, that's a success, and then I'll click OK. And then I'm just going to do the exact same thing again with fit y by x, travel card and income. And this time, the estimates look the same um, as they did in the notes. So one more thing that looks a little bit different than the notes is this graph here. Um, so with the graph, we've got these points jittered around. Um, and basically what this is showing us is just the distribution of the income data. So like we can tell here that we actually have a lot more data values for low income than we do on the high end of the income scale. Um, but otherwise, the heights of the points are just randomly jittered. It's not actually giving you any information. And I don't really like to see the points on the graph. So I'm going to click the down arrow here, um, plot options and then uncheck the box for show points. So now we just have the smooth curve um, for how predicted probability of a travel card changes based on income. Um, one more quick comment, I don't especially like the way Jump does this label on the right side, so it puts yes on the bottom and no on the top. Um, I think it just means that you're reading the probability of yes as like the height on this side, um, whereas the probability of no is the height on the other side. To me, that's a little bit confusing, but um, you can tell down here which way you've defined your success and failure. So if that um, label on the side, the axis label confuses you, you can just ignore it. Now I want to do the example with the types of carriers and the type of attachment. Um, I don't have a data set for this, so I'm going to create one. I'm going to do file, new data table. And I'm just going to put my data in as a table. So um, I'm going to do one column for each variable. So I'll have one column that is um, the type of carrier. I think I'm just going to say carrier. And then one column for the type of attachment. And I want to make sure that every combination is represented here. Um, so I'm going to have a soft carrier and a secure attachment, soft and insecure, plastic and secure, and plastic and insecure. And then I just have to add another column for the counts. So soft and secure was 19, soft and insecure was 4, plastic and secure was 10, and plastic and insecure was 16. Okay, so if I wanted to do analyze fit y by x, which is what I did last time, 
Um, this is actually going to do a chi-squared test because if we look at having a categorical explanatory and a categorical response, the default here is to do a chi-squared test. Um, so to have a little bit of flexibility with it, we're going to do fit model instead, analyze fit model. And it's good to see fit model because this is also um, what you would use for multiple regression. Remember, fit model allows for more than one explanatory variable. So attachment is my response variable. Carrier is my explanatory variable. So I'm going to put that in the construct model effects box. Um, but remember, these data were given in a table. So I need to include the counts in the frequency box. And you can see over here where it says personality, it's automatically chosen nominal logistic. Um, so that's what we want is to do logistic regression. Also, this allows us to change the target levels, secure and insecure, um, based on what we want the success to be. So I think it makes more sense to think of secure attachment as a success. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and change that there. You could also change it by um, changing the order of the categories like we did before. And then I'll click run. So notice that when we look at the parameter estimates, this is doing carrier plastic, whereas the output that we saw before um, was carrier soft. So the defaults are actually different depending on whether you're using jump or R. Um, so that's why I wanted you to see the R output earlier. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is good to be able to read different types of output, um, go back and forth between jump and R, but I don't know why I suddenly decided to lie and act like I had planned this all out from the beginning. Uh, no, it was just a different version of the notes. So even though we already fixed the order of secure and insecure, we do need to go back and change the order of soft and plastic if we want it to be consistent. So let's go back and change the carrier. And I'm just doing value order. And I'll reverse soft and plastic and click OK. I can see it worked. I've got the little asterisks over there. And then I'm just going to do fit model again. Attachment, carrier, putting the counts in the frequency box fixing secure versus insecure, and then I'll click run. Okay, so now we do have the right category, um, but we actually still don't have exactly the same um, values here. And if, and if you look at the slope, the estimate for the categorical variable, um, you may notice that it's basically half of what it was in the output. So how could we get it to match the R output? So remember, jump uses effect coding by default, so that would be like a 1 for soft, a negative 1 for plastic, um, whereas R and some other types of software um, use 1 and 0 using indicator coding. So we can change that up here. We can do um, indicator parameterization, and now we can see that it does match the output that was given in the notes. So I know these details can be a little bit tedious, but I do think it's important because you may be collaborating with somebody at some point um, that's using different software than you are, and it's important to know how to go back and forth between the different types of estimates.